All right, so today I am very excited because we are closing in on those 100 likes to the prepare for CCHI video. We have 76 likes, we have 20 more likes to go to reach the 100 mark, the 100 likes to the prepare for the CCHI video. So we are a little bit more than 75 percent so that makes me very very happy and that should make you very happy as well so we only have less than a quarter of likes to go just 24 likes to go so we can get the 100 likes to the prepare for the cchi video and why why am i so excited about that because when we get that video prepare for cchi to 100 likes we're gonna be posting the mip 21 video medical interpretation practice video to YouTube and that's not all once we post the MIP 21 video to YouTube We're gonna give you a chance to comment on it and everyone that comments on that video is gonna get a chance To get exclusive links to MIP 22. We're gonna pick two comments at random We're gonna send them exclusive links to MIP 22 We're gonna give them a chance to record their interpretations and send them over to us so we can provide some feedback So yeah, let's do it Let's get that video prepared to see, prepare for the CCHI to 100 likes. I thought we were gonna get it this week. We didn't get it this week, but I'm confident we're gonna be able to get it next week. So let's do it guys. And remember that if you support us on Patreon, where it was little as just $1, you already have access to the MIP 21 video and you will get access to all of the medical interpretation practice videos ad free. We have scripts to those videos, answer sheets to those videos. We have vocabulary lists and much, much more content. And every time we are trying to add much more content there. So we hope to have your support. So let's get started. Hello and welcome to Online Sessions where right after my shift, I give the highlights of my workday and answer any questions that might have been asked at a previous session. My name is Juan. I am an English, Spanish, medical video remote consecutive interpreter with over four years of experience. And today is Thursday, August 12, 2021. Today I took a total of 30 sessions. Of those 30 sessions, um, probably took like five audio sessions the whole day so it was a pretty long day of uh, sitting up right uh, not and they were pretty short audio sessions but yeah always a mix between audio and video sessions so that was that i have a couple of highlights today but before that i have to say you readers you readers you readers right you readers I, I don't know why I couldn't say yesterday, um, but I, like before I even said it, I was going to tell you this is a word that I used to struggle with a lot. Well, guess what? I was struggling with it yesterday as well. And uh, I, I struggled with interpreters or interpreter. I struggled with catheters or catheter and of course, ureter. But now I can say it perfectly and I don't know why though. Um, I couldn't say it. I mean, I mastered catheter, I mastered uh, interpreter, and I thought I had a ureter mastered, but I guess not. Ureter, ure you see, still trying to mess me up. Ureters, 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 ureters. And it just so sort of happens that I had to interpret today and I had to say it. So everything went well. And yeah, I did take um, all on my drive from my grandma's house to my house. Um, it's like a five minute drive, I was practicing. When I went home, I was practicing, so I got it now, you readers. Oh. So yeah, don't give up. If you don't know how to pronounce something correctly, just go ahead and look at the videos of how to pronounce it correctly and practice, 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 practice makes perfect and conscious practice will get you the pronunciation that you need. I can guarantee that because I've done it. All right, uh, so let's get to the highlights today. Uh, there are just two new uh, vocabulary terms. The first term is, let me show you. It is lactated ringers solution. And I don't think that's focusing right. All right, that is right there. Lactated ringer solution. And in Spanish is solution 
Ringer Lactato. So it's almost the same, pretty similar. And what is a lactated Ringer solution or LR for short? It is an intravenous IV fluid that you may receive if you're dehydrated, having surgery, or receiving IV medications. It is also sometimes called Ringer's lactate or sodium lactate solution. So this is similar to IV fluid. Well, this is IV fluid, but this is similar to um, saline, but it is different. I'm not gonna get into the difference, but just know that they are two different things. Saline solution is one IV fluid and lactated ringer solution is another type of IV fluid. So it might be a good idea to learn that. All right, and the next term is, and I have a story about this term. Now, you, you see that word right there? I'm going to say this is polycythemia vera or vera, I'm sorry, polycythemia vera. And in Spanish, polycythemia vera. Now, the story about this is that, of course, I didn't know how to pronounce this, and I looked up repeatable sources. Oh, before I move on, the definition for lactate is ringer solution was, um, I acquired it from healthline.com, all right? So I looked up very ref uh, reputable um, websites and uh, they all have a, um, a different pronunciation. I found one that said uh, polycemia vera. I found another one that said polycythemia vera. And of course, the one that I'm gonna go with is polycythemia vera. So I'm not sure how to pronounce it. I don't know if all, all those pronunciations are correct, but to me, just looking at the word, um, I would say polycythemia vera is correct, but don't hold me accountable for that. Go ahead and research. You will see that there's all kinds of pronunciations for that. So moving on, what is the definition from mayoclinic.org is that polycythemia vera or vera, uh, vera, 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 vera. I'm not sure about that one. Vera, it says Vera here, all right? So is a type of blood cancer. It causes your bone marrow to make too many red blood cells. These excess cells thicken your blood, slowing its flow, which may cause serious problems such as blood clots. So they were testing a man because he had a lot of red blood cells and they didn't know what was happening. So they were gonna test him for this. Hopefully he doesn't have it, right? Uh, but they said there were a lot of other reasons why he could have had that, but they were just trying to rule that one out. So, all right, we have finally reached that point of the video, the reason why you are here. 10 must know IEP school meeting vocabulary terms. The definitions were obtained from Google and SBC CELPA. Oh, I'm sorry, let me uh, spell that for you. S, B as in boy, C, S, E, L, P, A dot org. This is where I got like probably eight of the words for this, um, for this video. So if you wanna go ahead and give that website uh, a look, right? If you wanna go ahead and look at that website, for IEP related vocabulary, I would definitely recommend it and I would say it's a good, good idea. There's a lot of vocabulary words that I, well, I'm only limited to 10 because of the time, right? So I suggest you look at that website so you can get an idea of this uh, meetings. Before I get into that, I really, really do not like IEP school meetings and uh, uh, for uh, medical calls, I don't really like gene um, genetic uh, counseling because uh, genetic counseling, they ju I've said it before, they give you like really, really, really weird like uh, conditions or things that can go wrong with the baby, like rare, 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 rare. 
and they always get me another uh, reason why I don't like the IEP meetings is because when they start off like the teachers they there's like 10 teachers in the room right and then they have you um, they have you introduce all of the teachers to the parents right and then they are like oh yeah this is mr jack johnson he is a math teacher this is mr rachel miss rachel white she's the a regular school her regular school teacher this is mr blah 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 and then they say everybody's names and everybody's profession right and then they expect you to interpret that like oh no that is not happening uh try writing notes for names like names and professions like for example names when they give you a list of names that's hard and that's for me that's something impossible if you give me a list of names i will not be able to read them back to you why because i have to i don't know these people i'm not familiarized with them and i have to write down the names so that i actually can say them back right but like if i like summarize the name like our names i gotta write them out like how i hear them or uh how they are supposed to be spelled if not i'm not gonna remember what that name is so whenever they start trying to give me that list i interrupt them i tell them ma'am this is the interpreter speaking i'm sorry but there is no way that i'll be able to introduce every one of you i will require that you limit uh, the introductions to one or two people please and that just works wonder they understand real quickly and they get to it so yeah i i i i they're hard iep meetings are hard honestly to me they're hard all right so let's get started all right and uh, term number one is individualized education program or iep and in spanish is programa de educación individualizado what is this now an iep is a written educational plan for each special education student that includes instructional goals and objective objectives based upon the educational needs specified and developed by the iep team so when a child has special needs and he is going to school what the school does is of course every ch every special child has their own individual specialized needs right they can't just throw them out all, all in a room and be like all right you're all special children you're all gonna learn like this right no that can't happen because there's just so many different variables right maybe a child has a speech delay maybe uh the other child um has is in a wheelchair right maybe the other child uh, is blind maybe the other child is deaf so of course like even if you take those four children and you try to make a plan for those children and you try to make them learn the same of course it's not going to happen right so when that happens what the schools do is they make a specialized plan for that child that is tailor fitted for that child so that that child can learn um, with uh, those special needs that are required for him so i mean most of the calls that i get from schools are going to be iep and if not they are going to be fairly easy that's why i decided to make this video about iep all right so moving on to vocabulary word number two and here oh, can you focus all right there it is and this is attendance and the Spanish translation for attendance is asistencia. All right, and what is attendance? Attendance is the action or state of going regularly to or being present at a place or an event. All right, so we probably already know what attendance is, right? But just to explain it clearly, attendance, for example, let's say if you're enrolled in school and you go to school every day, then you have perfect attendance. If you're enrolled in school and you probably miss two days a whole year, you have pretty good attendance, really good, I would say. Uh, but if you are enrolled in school and you don't go a single day, then you have horrible or poor attendance. And that is a term that 
comes up a lot, a lot in uh, IEP meetings, and not just in IEP meetings, but also in regular school meetings. All right, number three, board, and the Spanish translation for that could be junta or consejo. I don't know if I can focus it correctly. All right. There it is. And what is a board? A board is a group of people constituted as a decision-making body of an organization. All right. So let's say that a child, um, like everyone that is attending to this child's IEP, they're in the child's IEP board, but it's not limited just to that, right? There's like the like the directive board of the school uh and all of that stuff so whenever they say board like the directive board in the school or the iep board or whatever but you know they're talking about a group of people and they say board then it's junta or consejo okay now moving on to term number four this is right here this is annual review revision annual now uh, annual review is a scheduled meeting of the IEP team on at least an annual basis to review revise and update the IEP now this is not limited to IEP but since I took this um, definition from an IEP website uh, that have vocabulary on it. Of course, it mentions IEP, but it's not limited to IEP. So an annual review can be an annual review of everything, uh, not just an IEP meeting. So this is something that happens once, at least once. Or, well, if it happens once, it's annual, right? If it is not, it, it will be, what? I don't know, biannual? <laughs> no, it's not biannual. How do you say it? I don't know. Bianual? No? I don't even know how to say it in Spanish. All right, so I'll have to get back to you guys on that one. I don't know. So, man, um, well, I can't dwell too much on this video, right? All right, so I'll probably have a, I'll probably have a different, um, biannual. A biannual sounds good, but for some reason it just doesn't sound good up here. Sounds good when I say it but my mind is telling me no. All right, so anyways, moving on to number five. Number five is appeal, and right here is apelación or apelar. What is an appeal? An appeal is an integral part of the due process and complaint procedures. If the party filing a complaint disagrees with the findings, the party may give input at the local board presentation of findings or request review of the findings by the state superintendent of instruction. A parent or district that disagrees with a due process decision may appeal that decision through the court of appropriate jurisdiction. Like for example, what is an appeal? This means that let's say that everybody agrees with the child's IEP but then the mother is like, no, you know what? Um, that's not gonna work for my child. I think that my child also needs this and this because of this and this. And uh, the board, the IEP board tells them, no, um, this is what we came up with and this is what we think is best for your child. Now the mother may refuse that and she will appeal and she will go to a higher entity to tell them and explain their situation that way they can um, revoke the the decision that was made and they could have another evaluation to make sure that the needs that the mother thinks the child needs are met all right so that is an appeal and that is not limited to IEP uh, meetings you can appeal a court uh, a court decision you can appeal uh, uh, decisions for uh, Medicaid, uh, insurance, all kinds of things you can appeal and this, that's like the legal term for it. Like, Bob, I don't agree with this. I'm going to go to somebody higher than you to tell them that I don't agree with this. So that is an appeal. All right. Number six, aptitude test. 
prueba de aptitud. So what is an aptitude test? An aptitude test is a test which measures someone's capacity, capability, or talent for learning something. So this is like a test that they give I children that have an IEP just to kind of get an idea of how they should be teaching these children and uh, the how they should schedule the classes and all of that stuff. So this is like one of those tests that they do so they can engage, they can have an idea of what the child needs as far as learning. Okay, and uh, number seven. That is right here. Fine. Whoa. When I'm almost dropping my mouse. All right. Uh, fine motor coordination. And here it is. Coordinación de habilidades motoras and finas. De habilidades motoras finas. Coordinación de habilidades motoras finas. So, what are these? Um, it pertains to the usage of small muscle groups, writing and cutting. Now, this is a term that I learned when I became a father because I was learning a lot of, I was reading a lot of literature on about children and development. So that is something that comes up. So like. Um, fine motor skills like it could be like for example making a, a pincer right to pick up stuff like uh, if you can pick up stuff that's a fine motor skill like writing is a fine motor skill cutting is a fine motor skill as well and um, of course some children that ha are in an IEP have some problems with this and they're trying to improve it and they test their fine motor coordination um, to see to devise a plan as well all right and uh, number eight number eight that is gross motor coordination and this is coordinación de habilidades motores gruesas all right and what is this this pertains to the usage of large muscle groups like jumping, running, bilateral ability to move both sides of the body at the same time, jumping, uni unilateral ability to move one side of the body without moving the other, like hopping, cross lateral, cross pattern, ability to move different parts of the opposite sides of the body together or in different sequences, skipping, which is highly integrated movement so gross motor con com, uh, coordination that is like standing up from a chair right um, what else uh, bending down uh, being able to pick up stuff like with both hands right trying to catch a, a big ball uh, just things that require uh, like um, larger muscles and larger coordination, right? Because if you're trying to pinch something like in five motor skills, then you only need the coordination of like the fingers in, like the muscles in the hand, right? The muscles in the fingers and that's it. It's very, very fine. But for example, if we have to catch a ball, then we're moving all of this like arms and stuff, right? So it's like much more, um, bulky much more involved so it's like gross you know like gross income like without taxes so it's like i should probably give the definition of gross i don't know why i didn't think about that but let's just say it's like uh, something big and fine it's like small all right so those are two very very important terms they don't get talked uh, um, in every iep meeting but uh, it is bound to come up in some of them for sure all right and uh number nine no yeah number nine all right number nine before i give you this spanish translation i want you to think about how you would translate it to spanish now the term is least restrictive environment i'm gonna give you guys five seconds starting now think about that how would you interpret that? 
Now, if it was me and this is the first time that I was seeing that term, what would I interpret it? I would say, entorno menos restrictivo. That's it, like the literal translation. But let me show you right here. Uh, here it is in English, least restrictive environment. And then, oh, I can't really see that. Uh, here it is, entorno académico educativo de restricción mínima. All right, so that's a mouthful. And uh, honestly, I didn't know that that is how it is to be translated. I would translate it as entorno de eh, restricción menor o, de mi o entorno de mínima restricción. So that's a new to me. That's news to me. Entorno académico educativo de restricción mínima. So what is this? It is the concept that each handicapped child is to be placed in a learning environment that most closely approximates the learning environment of his or her non-handicapped peers, regular classroom, and provides the most appropriate educational opportunities for their handicapped child right so of course um if they have a handicapped child of course um he is he is going to the the handicapped child is going to be limited right by his handicap but by his handicap but what this does is that um it prevents the child from um feeling like they are less right so they try to put them in an environment that closely re re or that resembles as close as possible to just a regular classroom that way the child can get can uh develop in a much uh better context than just being in a bubble right because he's handicapped like oh we got to keep him in a bubble like that's not good for him because in the end it'll now this is just my opinion okay um it, it, in the end it'll hurt him because he will not have that interaction with his peers right so what they want to do in the iep and in the least restrictive environment is okay the child is handicapped but we don't want to build those um like blocks inside of his mind right like oh you're handicapped you cannot uh you should uh like you're handicapped you're limited right so what they do is they put him in an environment and sometimes they like put him in like probably one hour in just a regular class that way the child has that stimulation and they can develop and they can remove those blocks right that just because they're handicapped they're less than uh, just a child that has no handicaps and they they remove those blocks so I find that perfect and I love it that they do that and that is what a least restrictive environment is all right and for number 10 that is surrogate and sustituto now this is a term that I learned after becoming an interpreter this is not limited to IEP meetings and a surrogate is a substitute, especially a person deputizing for another in a specific role or office. Now, a surrogate is a representative that is a legal representative for a person. For example, um, in an IEP meeting, a surrogate, it can be a surrogate parent, right? Maybe the parent is not able to go to the IEP meeting at that time. So he appoints someone, a surrogate, to go uh, to that meeting and uh, then just report back, right? Or if the child is a ward of the state, no parent, he doesn't have a parent available, right? Then they have a surrogate that has to represent the, the parent of the child. Um, there's healthcare surrogates, like for example, if a person um, is not able to take and make decisions on their own, they appoint a surrogate that can make decisions for them. So that is a very important term, not just in IEP meetings, but also in medical terminology. And that is going to be it for me today, guys. Please leave your questions in the comments and I will answer some of them on the next session. Remember that if there anything is time sensitive, uh, leave it in the set in the comment and I'll get to it as soon as I can hopefully before the um, the date 
right before the question the dating question i'll be here every monday through friday after work please 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 guys remember that we're still trying to get the prepare for the cchi video to 100 likes so let's get to it i want to thank everyone that has been pushing this video along with us thank you so much we are almost there just 24 more likes to go remember that we have a patreon page for as little as just one dollar you help motivate us to create much more content we give you access to all of the medical practice videos add free scripts answer sheets to those videos with carolary list and much more and most importantly you will forever win a place inside of our heart we love you to all of our Patreons. We love you to everyone that has bought us a coffee, to all of us subscribers, and to you that is seeing the end of this video. So thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you haven't done so for much more content. And don't forget to share. Happy interpreting. Goodbye.